Welcome to this video, in which I would like to introduce you to the SLSS concept, short for Single Launch Space Station. This space station design was not created by SpaceX, but, is an unofficial design made by us, just to clear up any confusion in case you were wondering. The Single Launch Space Station or SLSS, is as the name suggests, designed to be launched in one single launch, on top of a SpaceX Starship-derived second stage, and a super-heavy booster. Looking at it from afar, it resembles the currently flying Falcon 9, with its payload fairing in terms of shape or profile. So they would be aerodynamically similar. First, let's dive right into the specs of the SLSS. The SLSS is no joke when it comes to size. It sports a length of 31 meters and a width of 13 meters. It has an estimated weight of around 250 metric tons. Its internal pressurized volume is around 2,200 cubic meters, depending on the internal arrangement, which is more than double that of the International Space Station currently flying in orbit. This allows the SLSS to comfortably host 20 astronauts on a permanent basis, with enough space for research, physical exercise, entertainment, and spacious personal sleeping cabins. One of the more striking features of the SLSS is the 360 degrees observation deck with large windows on all sides, allowing for maximum visibility for viewing the Earth, the stars, and anything in between, leaving astronauts and space tourists in awe from the breathtaking views. The observation deck alone can easily accommodate 20 curious space spectators. Besides functioning as an Earth and space observatory, it can also function as a great place for astronauts to practice some space sports. Perhaps some spocker, soccer in space, which might create new enthusiasm for space from the sports industry. Astronauts could even try to run against the inner wall to create their own artificial gravity. The rest of the interior is highly dependent on what the station would be used for. The SLSS can be built with different internal layouts for research, touristic, or long-duration missions. Since it has a relatively large radius, even low-gravity research could be practiced by having a rotating ring inside the station with small plants or animals to test how different centrifugal gravity forces would affect plant and animal life. The possibilities are numerous when it comes to the usage of the internal spaces one important requirement of any space station is power generation. The SLSS is not lacking in this regard. It is equipped with four foldable solar arrays measuring 420 square meters each, able to produce an average of 300 kilowatts per hour. This is enough to power the life support systems as well as an advanced iron propulsion unit at the base of the station. The iron propulsion unit is used to raise the SLSS's orbit after a period of orbital decay with 16 newtons of force over a period of many days. The advantage of an iron engine over traditional chemical rockets is that it can be up to 20 times more efficient, saving on complexity and weight. Also, it looks kind of sci-fi one other major feature of the SLSS is that it has a dedicated docking bay for an iPod class or iron-powered orbital transporter type spacecraft. This docking bay can be pressurized and depressurized so that an iPod can dock and undock. We will talk about the iPod in a later video. This area could also be used as a workshop to facilitate large repairs on equipment or the iPod craft. On the sides of the docking bay door, we have two docking ports for different spacecraft. 
like the SpaceX Crew Dragon, or spacecraft from other space companies or governments. There is a dedicated docking port for the Starship Crewed version. This docking port is situated above the observation deck on top of the SLSS. Here, the SpaceX Crewed Starship can easily drop of astronauts and space tourists for a short or long duration stay on the SLSS. In the middle of the observation deck, there is a secured tunnel for new arrivals to pass through. Just in case the observation deck is out of commission due to micrometeorite impacts. But don't worry, the observation deck window glass is enhanced with graphene enhanced transparent aluminum. So it should be as strong as the regular hull materials. So this concludes a brief overview of the SLSS specifications. I hope I managed to satisfy the techie or nerdy side of some of you. Now in terms of how the SLSS gets launched into orbit, we can keep it relatively simple. We have of course, the famous SpaceX Super Heavy Booster, with its fiery Raptor engines as the first stage. Obviously, the Super Heavy Booster will return to Earth to be reused hundreds of times before retirement. As the second stage, we basically stripped Starship of its sea-level Raptor engines, heat shield, landing legs, all flaps, and then cut it in half. So we ended up with a 9-meter diameter expendable second stage, similar to Falcon 9 its second stage. So it would only consist of, three vacuum Raptor engines, fuel tanks, the hull, and some basic avionics. A complete Starship can bring 300 metric tons to orbit in its fully expendable configuration. So, with our second stage concept, it could probably do around 330 metric tons, which should be enough to launch the SLSS. Of course, this second stage could remain attached to the SLSS for different post-launch functions. Perhaps, it could be refueled for another burn, to get it into lunar orbit, or even Mars orbit. One other idea is, to have the second stage rendezvous with an orbital refinery for recycling. Or the three Raptor engines, which are the most expensive part, could be detached and brought back to Earth, in cargo starships after delivering their cargo in similar orbits. The hull and fuel tank, could be used as part of a permanent orbital fuel depot. This concludes the SpaceX SLSS or single launch space station concept overview. Please remember that this space station concept is an unofficial concept and not endorsed by SpaceX or Elon Musk. It is meant to make us start thinking of what kind of space stations and infrastructure could be made possible with an operational Starship fleet. If you see some fundamental flaws in this concept, I urge you to share them in the comment section below. Or, if you would like to see an animation of a full launch and orbital deployment of the SLSS, please motivate us for it in the comments, and it will happen. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to become part of envisioning our future in space.